I get comments sometimes on the channel about what the cockpit of Echo Yankee Zulu is like, what you know, what certain things are, what goes on in here, what equipment do I have. So in this video, I thought I'd give you a quick tour whilst we're flying from Sydney back to Melbourne on what actually happens here at the front of Echo Yankee Zulu. The viewers of the channel may also have noticed that uh, we are missing a star guest and my usual passenger as well. I left Milkshake at home, I'll be honest. So introducing a new to the channel, Mr. Banana. What's that, Mr. Banana? You want to sacrifice yourself for the channel? Uh, Echo Yankee Zulu, contact me, 124-1. One, 1241, one, Echo Yankee Zulu. Lucky escape. It's actually really straightforward. I'll turn the camera around here. The screens sometimes make it look really complicated, but it's not. Um, two screens, four screens actually, but they all do different, separate, and, but quite straightforward things. So let me take you through what each of them do. And sometimes it's all the information can look really complicated, but at the end of the day, it's always the same thing, as if, if you know what you're looking for and you know where to find it. It's just like using a computer screen at home. It's like, it's no big deal really. On the left hand screen, I have a couple of key bits of information. That's my airspeed indicator. That's my artificial horizon. You can see it moving around a bit as the airplane moves around in the turbulence. It's my altimeter showing that we're at 8,000 feet. And this is my VSI or vertical speed indicator, which I could bug up and down depending on how quickly I want to climb or descend. And then further down, uh, then I have my HSI, shows us which compass heading we're on at the moment. So 255, what our track is. This is a wind vector, shows us that we've got a wind from 250, so 22 knots of wind at 250. That's pretty much our heading, that's why the arrow is pointing towards us. All headwind at the moment. That then translates to these airspeeds down here. TAS is true airspeed, GS is ground speed. So you can see our airspeed, so through the air we're actually flying at 161 knots, but because of that headwind that we have here, uh, over the ground we're only flying at 138 knots. OAT is outside air temperature, and then we have some information, some engine information over here, which is good that it's replicated here. If it's fuel flow, the tachometer, manifold pressure, some oil prayer, temperatures and pressures. Because if this screen goes, and this is the, what's called the MFD, the multifunction display, if that goes, bloop, then uh, I have some information from the engine replicated over on this side. So the multifunction display, I've got it set to the engine page. I'm not going to go through everything, but it's basically, you know, temperatures, pressures, RPM of the engine. These are all the cylinder uh, exhaust gas temperatures, the cylinder head temperatures here. Uh, some information about the electrical system. But MFD, the M stands for multi. That means it does multiple things. So I can go across to the map page, uh, which gives me, obviously, the map. Hence the maps page. <laughs> I've got a terrain warning system. I never use that. I have it. That's good. Um, I can have charts on here, I'm not going to put the charts on here, if you saw my video about Jefferson charts, you can get them on here, but I have charts on my iPad and there's no point having them on here to be honest. Um, this I use quite a lot, this is my trip page, so it shows me uh, all the waypoints that I have, so we're heading to Avbeg, you can see the distance, the estimated time on route, the ETA, this is actually not right, the ETA, I want to get it set to UTC, it's showing local time, but it's showing the incorrect local time. I think we've got a daylight savings thing we need to fix on there. Nearest airport, which is useful on here, but I do also have a nearest airport, I'll come to the Garmin's in a sec, but I have a nearest airport function on the Garmin GTN 650s, which is a bit more useful, so I actually use this one more than I use the nearest function up here. I have all my checklists, in flight, landing, before takeoff, climb, cruise, all that kind of stuff. An auxiliary page, which I never use, and the engine page, which is what it was on. Air conditioning systems over here. Then coming down the central stack, this is my communications panel. This means I'm listening on COM1. I have two radios, COM1 and COM2. COM3 doesn't do anything. And so what I can do is, you can see here, I sometimes have 1215 set on. This is COM1, this is COM2. So if I want to listen to COM2, I can press that button. So now I'm listening to two channels, but only speaking on one. And any pilots out there, how many of you have been listening on two channels and speaking on the wrong one? Yeah, hands up if you've done that. Really, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Hands up if you've ever done that. Hands up if you've done that more than once. I think I did it about two weeks ago, actually. And on my two GTN 650s, I have one set to the map page, the main map page, which is just kind of like a duplicate of the map page I have up here, but it's good to have a backup um, with some additional information on here. And then I have the second one, actually, if I hold down the home screen. I set this to what's called the default nav page. And the default nav page 
And that gives me some really basic information about generally about the leg that I'm on and also the destination. So it means I've got 10 miles to the next waypoint, which is Avbeg. Uh, the estimated time for that is four and a half minutes. The track is 256. But then the bottom row I've got set up as my destination. So it's always for the destination. So I know to uh, Morabit in this case, 280 miles. ETA, the local, or the UTC, sorry, is 0656. And that's two hours and five minutes. Wow, this is a slow flight. Anyway, that's the headwind, but yeah, still got two hours until we get to Moravian. And just down the right-hand side, these are radio frequencies. This is the squawk code I'm on, 4206. And then further down, autopilot, showing that I'm using the flight director, which are these arrows here. Nav mode means it's following the GPS line, and alt means it's holding an altitude. If I want to climb and descend, I can use this autopilot. These are my flaps, don't use those when I'm in the cruise. Throttle, mixture fuel pump, fuel gauges, fuel tank, we're on the right hand tank at the moment, don't need to swap for another half an hour. And then underneath the primary flight display, these are a lot of my uh, switches, well these are all the switches, you know, the batteries, avionics, things like pitot heat, my ISIC system if I ever need to turn that on, lighting system, and I have standby gauges, so I have a backup airspeed indicator, uh, backup alternate, uh, there's a backup artificial horizon and a backup altimeter. So this screen goes bang, this is what I start referring to. And of course there are a few more bits to it as well, but I'm not going to go through every single thing. But yeah, look, if you've got any questions about the, the cockpit or anything that you saw just then, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and anything else you want to see in the aircraft as well, especially before I set off on the round the world trip, because if you're going to be following me, which I hope you will, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this environment. Isn't that right, Mr. Mr. Banana?